Sit. Okay. <laughs> yes, good. <laughs> okay. Uh, hey everybody, uh, welcome back to Fuse Week 6. Uh, we hope you've had a good week and it came for another week of Fuse. Um, if you remember last week we had Ollie's dog Frankie and this week we've got uh, my dog called Minky. Uh, she's a bit over two years old. Uh, she's a Groodle, which is a cross between a Golden Retriever and a Poodle, for those of you who know dogs well. Um, and she loves to play fetch, so a bit later you might get to see her chasing balls around the hall. <laughs> um, Thank you to everybody uh, who sent in their posters from last week. Uh, here they are for, for everyone else. Um, and now we're going to head to the uh, prayer wheel with Hannah. So we'll see you then. Ooh, oh. All right, so that was pretty fun spinning the wheel and I kind of want to spin it again, but I've had my spin. So I thought I might introduce a special guest who has not been on an episode of Fuse yet. <laughs> it's Paul! Hi everybody. <laughs> hey everybody, thank you Hannah for inviting me. It's good to be here. Hello Fuse. Um, if you haven't met me yet, my name's Paul, and I'm so keen to pray. Let's see what we're going to pray for. No. <laughs> it's, it's school. All right, we're praying for school. Let, please pray with me. Uh, Father in heaven, we thank you for our teachers. Thank you for our schools. Thank you that we get an education to read and to write, to learn how to express ourselves, learn about your world, your truth. And God, thank you that um, we can go to school and learn how to read your scriptures. Uh, Father, please help us to work well and to listen to our parents when they help us to do our work. And uh, God, we ask that we might return back to school, real school, sometime soon. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> That's all right. Hey guys, my name's Ollie and this is my first talk. Hope you guys are excited to hear from a new speaker because I reckon they saved the best for last. Um, last week we heard from Chrissy about how the Bible has changed people and we learned five things. We learned that the Bible can change our hearts completely. We learned that about a man called Saul who hated God and then became a Christian and was saved. We also learned about sin and the acronym that goes along with it, which is shove off God, I'm in charge, not you. Um, we also learned that Jesus died on the cross for us so that we can have a relationship with God. Finally, we learned that reading the Bible helps us understand why we get forgiveness and why um, God sent his son to die on the cross for our sins so that we can have a relationship with him. This week, our big question is, how does God's word change us? We're gonna start answering this question by reminding ourselves what God's word is. God's word is the Bible, and the Bible is where we get to know God, who he is, and what he's like. On our first episode of Fuse, Hannah talked about how the Bible is God's living word. And we read this in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. And if you have your Bibles next to you, I'd like you to open them up and read along with me. And I'll give you a second to find it, just like I will. Read along with me. All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. As we remember, the Bible is written about God through his people so that we can learn how to rebuke, correct, and train in righteousness, so that we can be equipped with the skills to do his good work. Now this week we're going to learn about how God's word changes us. God's word changes our heart and actions. So we... So what we love, which is our heart, 
will impact on how we act upon it. An example of this is I'm in year 10 now, but in year 7 I really wanted a dog. So I made promises, I was begging my parents, making promises to walk it, feed it, train it so it was the best dog ever. And as you saw, my hard work paid off as you met Frankie last, in last week's episode. And this is an example of how what you love will change your actions on how to get it. And if you did miss last week's episode, this is an image of me and Frankie, so you, you get the picture. If you'd like another example of this, it's a marshmallow experiment where children are put in, have a marshmallow put in front of them and told not to eat it. And you can see if their desire overcomes them and if they eat it or if they get or if they can survive the full minute without eating it. And the link will be in the description below. One way God's word can change our heart and actions is through hope. We see hope in the Bible with the hope of eternal life of, in heaven with hanging out with God all the time. How sick is that? When I looked up the definition on Google of what hope is, it came up with a feeling of expectation and desire for a particular thing to happen. As Christians, what we are expecting and desiring is for Jesus to come back. And God gives us hope in a hopeless world. God gives us hope through his promises, which he keeps time and time again. And his greatest promise is that if we believe in him, that we will go and live in heaven with him. How awesome is that? If we have this life-changing hope, it has to change our life, right? We have to live differently. If we believe in God and his way of life is the best way to live and the only way to live, we have to live in the Bible so he can show us where we should put our hearts and how to live our life. One of the passages we learn about is how God wants us to live. And this is Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 to 23. In this passage, we learn about the fruits of the Spirit, the fruits of the Spirit and how God wants us to live. Um, now grab your Bibles again and turn to Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23. One of the passages we learn about how God wants us to live is in Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 to 23. In this passage we learn about the fruits of the Spirit and how God wants us to live. Now grab your Bibles out again and turn to Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 and read along with me. Read along. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. I know it's hard to follow all of these because we're sinful, and I know the whole Fuse team does too. Um, I especially find it hard to be patient with my siblings when they're annoying me, but I know that God has promised to help me and when I ask in prayer. Now... Let's bow our heads and close our eyes and pray to God. Right. Dear God, thank you for giving us your Bible to read. Thank you for giving us hope. Please help, our, please help change our hearts and actions to be more like the fruits of the Spirit. Please help everyone at Fuse to trust in what Jesus has done for them and trust that God is always with them. Amen. All right, now let's get on to the poster. Now onto the poster, how does God's word change us? Firstly, I'm going to draw a Bible, as the Bible changes us. I'm not the best drawer, so you'll have to bear with me. Uh, that's the Bible. <laughs> Might not look like one, but yep. Next, I have... I'm drawing hope, so... I'm going to draw a big love heart. Uh, yeah. With hope, because that's what hope is. 